Okay, I'm broadcasting. Okay. For this, that's great. Right. Marie, for you, you want it for computer? I hope nobody will throw it down. So he's gonna move maybe here. The main thing is he's tall, so here he has no head. Let's see if he can do a little more. Any way to do that? Yeah. Yeah. No, just to the, the screen. No, it doesn't go any further. That no, does. Okay. Yeah, it's working. Yeah, except for me, the camera over here, so it's a little delayed. Yeah, it's, all, it's delayed. It's like uh, it's 10 delay. seconds delayed.
crazy. It's turning the, the build around. You see? Yeah. It's turning it upside. Oh yeah, mirror. It's turning water out. Mirror. It's Some, mirroring. The, the, it's mirroring. Because the, the titles are the words. The the mirror backwards. Yeah. That's strange. That's very strange. It's mirroring it. Let's see if we could do something about it. It's because it's the because you're shooting with that one and not one forward or I don't know. Yeah, very weird. I already have two viewers. Oh, yeah. It's not here though. Huh? It's not mirroring here for the broadcasting, so maybe it's just that's great. Um probably just that screen. Ah, there it's okay. Yeah. Oh, okay, then it's okay. How do you know you take only one mirror? You've lost the mirror, guys.
Yeah, I'm just gonna use part. Yeah. All righty then. Thank you. 
he was a he was the leader after the war. Yeah. He was also So he was really like a leader and partly also but that sort of and left everybody else. No, because it was actually you know, we did, uh, nobody we could not see a push arm as I didn't know anybody who was out of work or who was worried to lose it. It's not an option to look at that. If you want to work, you can talk to the we have this uh, system that was like the department was called self government. Nobody there. Where are yeah. yeah. Everybody's looking at home, you know, like uh, we have two viewers. <laughs> I don't think this is really wide, you know. I think that's what people are not coming. Yeah, but at uh, the moment we have one viewer. That's why we didn't have so many videos because there were 10 days. But there were no physicals. So it was like. Yeah. 
Ach so, du bist ja jetzt das Ich 
Schon mal gut aus. <lacht> Thank <laughs> you. 
South Africa, uh, Brazil, um, um, uh, Colombia, United States of America, Canada, um, Ireland, the UK, um, uh, Denmark, uh, Sweden, Finland, Russia, not you, SSR, not Russia. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> kind of fun. Um, uh, Ukraine, um, Austria, Italy, Switzerland, and Germany. So that, that's the, the group uh, from industries like advertising, media, journalism, entertainment industries. Uh, design, communication technology, marketing, even education and data, not to forget. So that is a wonderful interdisciplinary mix. And we talked about interdisciplinary, the value of, of working interdisciplinary that happens here in the school. Uh, before we start, uh, uh, I'd like uh, you to know that Peter Cordra from Victor Leo Burnett, um, one of the publicist agencies, 
Uh, it's his birthday today, so why don't you get up? Peter? Hello, yeah, it's him. Wow. Over here, it's his birthday. And you know what, what his birthday present is? The agency gave him a trip to Berlin one day at the Berlin School. Isn't that wonderful? That, that can become a, a complete new business idea for us. So, happy birthday to you. Um, now, uh, the headline of, of this session with Maurice is pioneering the industry on behalf of a pioneer. Uh, what is so exciting about Publicis, they had in Marcel Deutschland uh, uh, Langschild, uh, uh, a true pioneer. Uh, he, for instance, brought radio broadcasting uh, into France. Uh, actually, he was in, into entertainment, this uh, 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 radio station that uh, he built, uh, um, sort of launched in the Piaf. Um, quite a remarkable. Achievement, American style uh, 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 I say brand research, research on brand and behavior to a uh, Paris pioneer that uh, he actually at a certain point of time uh, opened the drugstore where the Parisians, uh, the, the young Parisians actually enjoyed, um, uh, was quite chic, this drugstore, I remember when it was opened. Actually, I walked over to the drugstore and um, there was just on, on the newspaper that John Lennon was shot. I mean, that, that was the yeah, first time when I... Uh, anyway, uh, uh, now we know that since these times, actually, I remember campaigns. The one campaign that I liked most, maybe from Biblicis, was the campaign for DIM, which only happened in, in cinemas, and it was actually foreseen Victoria's Secret, if you want. Yeah? I mean, it was really sexy. Uh, is something that can be easy done today. No? Uh, pioneering the industry, we have uh, got a lot of messages about the development of Publicis. I was a bit a part of it uh, uh, when I worked at Leo Burnett, when, when Publicis took over Leo Burnett, so I have some, some intimate knowledge, but uh, talking about uh, um, uh, the times where change is at stake um, and where you need not only creative leadership, you need a maverick, you need trailblazers, you need people that adapt change. And I know some of these agencies are positioned behind the publicists is lead the change. That is the focus. Uh, a, a vital part of leading the future, uh, pioneering, pioneering the future. So with that, Please welcome Morris Levy. Thank you for the time. Uh, he has taken out of his schedule.
I promised that one day I would be coming, and they did. <laughs> uh, you have with Michael somebody who is uh, the the most persistent <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the most friendly in his persistence. Uh, I don't know how many times he asked me to come, and uh, every time I was bumping on him in uh, a can or whatever, boys, you have to come. And they said, okay, one day I will do it. And uh, I'm here. And they have chosen uh, an interesting day, which is uh, November 11. Uh, November 11, for those who are coming from uh, uh, old part of the world, is uh, uh, the time of the armistice in uh, the First World uh, War. And I'm uh, pleased to be in Germany in that day. Uh, so, and that now all this is part of the class. I have a lecture. I hate to read. If there is something that I have never been able to do correctly, is to read the speech. Uh, so I will try to take you through the task which has been imposed upon me by my friend. He said uh, that I had to speak about pioneering communication on behalf of a pioneer. In fact, <clears throat> when I'm thinking about this, there, there are a few pioneers in, uh, in our industry. Not many, but there are a few ones. Uh, Marcel Bussain Rocher was one, uh, and there has been uh, certainly uh, uh, Fairfax Falcon was one. Mm -hmm. uh, Ted Bates, Gerald <coughs> Thompson. There, there was a few who had been uh, creating uh, new ways of thinking, uh, new approaches, uh, uh, new thinking. The reality is that, in fact, pioneering is almost a contradiction, a paradox in our world. We are supposed to be at the forefront of everything which is good. We are supposed to have uh, the mavericks, the people who are really uh, uh, young, uh, irreverent, uh, capable of uh, 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 being uh, audacious uh, and uh, building uh, new roads and then uh, new openings. The reality, when you look at how our business works, uh, is that we are, as we would say in French, conformists. We are, honestly, and if we look at this with uh, sincerity, we are conformists. <coughs> there are some reasons for that. There are some reasons because uh, uh, we are not in a, a, an industry from simple metrics and a scientific approach. We can add some science and we can add if you, we can tell the market. But yes, now because of uh, digital, we have the analytics, the measurement, which is true. I would say which is high true. But the reality is that uh, even now, we cannot <coughs> measure precisely, and maybe it's good that we can measure precisely what we are going to do. It's like uh, when uh, a writer is writing a book, or a director is directing the film. He has not always the recipe for a bestseller, he has not always the, the recipe for making uh, the best uh, uh, movie. And uh, even when you look at uh, Steven Spielberg, there has been 
seen some great films and they have some are less great. And um, no one has a, a, a recipe for uh, doing uh, something which is uh, uh, absolutely scientific and this campaign will work. So, there is, uh, every time that we start a, a new media, we are going through some uh, uh, experience and uh, uh, try and the error or the failure and we try again and uh, we have a few uh, experiences in this field that if we, I don't know what was uh, uh, the radio in the 30s but clearly I get that the first uh, radio messages or the first uh, TV spots were probably uh, something that we will look with kind of tenderness today because oh, this is what uh, our father had done. Uh, and uh, compared to what we are doing today, which is almost a, a, a factory, uh, where we can do things with uh, uh, almost a few precise idea, it is uh, very different. One of the problems that we are facing when we are doing uh, something new is that, in fact, very often the client is fearing that we are going in territories where he has no idea, he has not a clue of what the return would be. And uh, if we look at uh, the current situation in nowadays where there is so many new things, we could think that, that yes, this is the time for being again a pioneer. It is the right time. There are so many startups, so many new things that we should be pioneering and creating something new. And in fact, uh, we, we have uh, only one small problem to do the things as we would like to do. When you look at the new world of digital, there is one issue, a small one, limited one, but uh, interesting, is that uh, we are addressing, uh, exchanging, uh, interacting with people. And it's a shame that people are people. You cannot predict their reaction. Uh, you cannot tell how people will react to one of your ads, to one of your um, trick, to one of uh, your ideas. And uh, people are analog, they are not digital. And uh, <coughs> you, know, you cannot put this, not yet, I don't know, but you did uh, the, the thing in the future. You cannot yet count that the people will react exactly as you wish. Yeah, is that uh, technology today is at the heart of almost everything we do. And technology is a risk. And uh, the people who are risk adverse uh, should uh, maybe stay at home. <laughs> but uh, the people who are interested in technology should look at technology as a way of being maybe opening new roads uh, and then um, when you you look at uh, what, what happened in the recent years you see that uh, it's uh, uh, clearly the most risky bet for the future and the most interesting one the most risky because when you look at uh, any company who has picked the wrong technology, they are suffering for years, sometimes decades. 
look at what happened with Sony. They picked the wrong technology. And uh, they have been deriving uh, and drifting uh, for years. And they are not yet back where they were. They were dominating the world. I don't know. There are some people who are a little bit more than 20 here. <laughs> not many, but uh, for the people who are slightly above 20, they maybe remember of uh, something which was called the Walkman. <laughs> Walkman who has been invented by Sony. And who invented the iPod? Sony should have. And why Sony has not invented the iPod? Because they went on the wrong technology path. And maybe also because of one of the most important issues that one can face. I mentioned this during uh, our talk, which is complacency or arrogance. Mm. We are the one who have one day, so we need to invent something new. And that is uh, when you start thinking like this, it's very hard to be again a pioneer. The other thing that you have. That if you want to be a pioneer, you have to think that uh, uh, should help you judge where you are putting your feet. But the real uh, uh, it, it, it has to be neutral. A little bit from here and a lot from here. So uh, it's really something which is uh, uh, an individual who want absolutely something. In French, we say "défricher." To go in area as well where nobody else has uh, uh, been able to go. And, okay. We tried it. Didn't work. We tried something similar. And when you look at each thing which started by the way, exactly one of the years before. Have to fight also. Uh, when you look at the history, and we have written a book, I guess I sent you that book, 1842. If I have not, I should. I will. Uh, it, it's uh, a book which uh, uh, makes in tune with uh, the sociological moment of uh, history. <coughs> and what you find is that uh, good advertising the The French man, at least. Advertising has been always about 
individual talent, individual uh, something that um, uh, has been uh, just the thinking of one or two individuals, hardly two. Even when the agency is called Young and Rubicon, there is one who is leading the way. When you look at FCB, there was three, uh, but the only thinker was Fairfax Cole. Uh, it, it, it's always the same. There is one uh, DDB, it was all the idea of Bill Bernbach. Uh, BBH is Johnny Garthy. Uh, we can think about Barton, we can think about Google, and Google is a very good friend. Nigel is fantastic, but the real thinking, the, the one who is having this idea of what creativity should be and the black sheep, etc., is the uh, creative director in that case. Johnny Garfield. So, uh, this is something which is uh, uh, to be always reminded that you, 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 you can't have a group with a pilot. You, you have an individual candidate, and you can have a team following, and you can have a band who will be his band, his gang, who will really create a difference, who will really create something. There is a few things, if you want to, do not be seen uh, as uh, 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 somebody who is uh, digging a, a grave, and uh, if you want to create something which will last, there, there is uh, some reflexes that uh, you need to have. The first thing is obviously to be cautious uh, and to be sure that uh, what you are proposing, what you are building, is, is something which uh, uh, will, will work, or that if it doesn't, that you don't do harm. So you have to, to fight against uh, the, the risk and to make sure that uh, being uh, uh, capable of moving a little bit the leader. The other aspect that you fight, you have to fight skepticism. And uh, I will share with you an interesting story. And this was in uh, 83. 1983, this was last century, it's a long time ago. Many of you were not born. Uh, in 1983, uh, I visited a, a, an exhibition and they found something which I found fantastic, which was an electronic palette, quantum. And with this quantum palette, you could change the color, you could change the shape, you could change a lot of things. It was the ancestor of what we know today. And I said, this could be fantastic, it could help uh, the creative people. We will avoid to have uh, some uh, uh, layout, some rush. We can do that pretty quickly. We will speed up the process. We will bring to client a lot of different uh, ways of looking at the same ideas. And I bought one in uh, uh, this San Francisco Fair exhibition. And uh, uh, I hired someone who has been trained uh, during uh, two months uh, at Quantel uh, in uh, the area of San Francisco. And uh, we put it in, in a room. And in those days, it was quite big, and we had air conditioning left. And uh, during almost a year, I put it in the center of the creative department. A room that the center. So no one can escape. Everyone who is going to the coffee or uh, grabbing uh, something or moving around had to go through that. Oh, yeah. 
nothing. No one creative uh, director, assistant, executive, whatever, call him as, or call her as you like, entered in that room and looked at what this uh, palette could do. One day, one of these creative director had a problem with a client. And the client said, I hate your act as it is. I love the idea. I want to see new pictures, format, idea, with the same idea, different, tomorrow. Timidly, he knocked at the door. Is there a problem? Can you help? And the guy was so happy that he worked all the night. And in the morning, the client, with the creative director, with the team, they found a collection of possibilities. Everything that you do today, like this. And, and it was the beginning, and they saw that this uh, machine is uh, just a machine, just helping, and not doing any harm. Not biting the end, not, not hurting, and uh, it has been the beginning of uh, an acceleration <coughs> and the help to the creative Another thing that we, we which illustrates the paradox uh, I was mentioning, which is quite interesting, when you, you see a new media which is coming to you. And uh, all the media people, if there is any media people in the room, know that story very well. Any new media come to the agency, say, I have a great media, it's fantastic, this is what it would be. We will uh, address this kind of audience, we will have this, etc. And uh, normally, the first issue, there is a lot of ads because first they are offered, and second, the kind of happy. And then the magazine comes and says, okay, first issue has been successful. The second, would you play some ads? Ah, I'd rather prefer to wait for the number six or seven because I'm not sure that you will be still there at the number six or seven. And obviously, if we are not placing ads, there is very little chance that it will be there at the six or seven. And that is something that I have seen, I don't know how many times. But we are supposed to take a risk. We are supposed to help our client to go in new areas, in new domains. And when we have the possibility of going there, you know, when I'm placing my ad in uh, Der Spiegel, or L'Express or on TV, I know that uh, I, I will get that kind of result. If in this new magazine, I'm not sure, so I prefer to wait. And uh, the last thing that I wanted to, to mention is, uh, and is interesting as uh, uh, it's something that we have all experienced, which is the internet bubble. Internet bubble, you, uh, I think that advertising people, we should look at how we were in a previous life. And I'm asking myself if, if in a previous life we were not sheep. Because uh, in the internet the bubble, at the top era, we were to put maximum ad on all these new things. The bubble burst, wow, same move. We were rushing back and we abandoned the territory without looking what was working, what was not working. And we are supposed to be the avant-garde. That's the reason why I'm saying that being a pioneer is not something that we see very often. I had personally the fortune of working uh, with Master Gustav He was a true pioneer. 
Not only he was fascinated. Um, interesting. And as he said several times, he said, I tried a lot, I failed, I don't know how many times, but I had a few successes, and these few successes have been enough for my whole success life. And uh, <coughs> uh, if there is uh, one big big thing that he taught me is uh, to be curious. To be curious about uh, everything. To observe and to be curious and accept with that curiosity is the
äh, och jobbar där i Germany. Det är Marco Secundo, who is now the uh, CMO, global CMO. But uh, Coca-Cola in, in uh, Russia has been extremely successful and has won a lot of market share. And in fact, pretty quickly after they plateaued. And when they plateaued, they were looking for a way of rebounding, bouncing back, and winning more market share. And the only way uh, they were looking is to spend more, which is good for the agency and the, the media, but not so good when uh, at the end of the day you are not getting the result that you are expecting. And uh, Sergio Zeman at that time was uh, asking me if I had a solution and said, listen, Give me six weeks. And during these six weeks, we did uh, two things. The first thing we did was to take teams that we sent in Asia for three weeks in the deep country. They went to see the Mujik where they were living. They went, they were not in Moscow, in uh, uh, what is St. Petersburg today, etc. This was not uh, the place where we, we went. We went into the country and said him, gathering all the information, we came with uh, a, a campaign that uh, we proposed. And this is uh, a campaign which was uh, in the deep soul of uh, the Russian people. They recognized their story, modernized, with the Coke legend, and it was a plant which has worked beautifully, and instead of being sold only in some big cities, they started to be sold in the countryside. And uh, again, it is because we have been able to uh, uh, connect with uh, the the people. So the, we built a new legend based on an old legend, which was shared by all. There, curiosity uh, is something which should. Uh, help you being always flexible mentally and having always the, the, your mind, your brain in alert, in red alert. I don't believe that uh, the brain sleeps. And they think that uh, when uh, you are looking at something, either you, you have uh, you are not seeing, or you are observing. And when they are observing, and every time you look at things, you discover the behavior of the people, you discover some aspect, we change the life, and we change the way in which you can advertise and you can connect to the people. It is this little small thing. Other thing that I would like to to mention is that um, you have to accept to learn, and you have to accept that somebody else has a better idea. I remember when I was running the Conseil, and I was uh, the CEO, and I was. Uh, looking at the creative work, I wanted always that we have the whole team, not the creative director, the planner, and uh, the account guy. I wanted the assistant <coughs> And I wanted the opinion of everyone. Because very often, first, the first thing that this does 
is to train your people. It's something which is a training exercise, which is excellent because they are sitting in the room and they are seeing the senior people working, reacting, and they are the witness of a small drama, which is always how are we going to fight for an idea. When they are confident, they dare to raise their hand, and very often you find the jam. So, I have always been struck by uh, somebody for whom I had great admiration, which was uh, Thomas Edison, and they have never understood why he has never wanted to believe in the idea of Nikola Tesla, which was the alternate circuit, which is what we have today and we had since ever. And I think that this kind of way to learn from somebody else, to be so uh, arrogant that you have the best idea is completely contrary to our work. No one has a better idea than altogether. No one can lead, can have the beginning of an idea. It is always a teamwork and uh, it is always something which is leading to uh, a, a, a great uh, uh, a, a great solution. I have mentioned the right to fail, I will not insist. And the last thing is uh, uh, the issue of collaboration. Uh, we have to learn to collaborate. Now, can we be a pioneer? Can we be a pioneer in today's world? In our world, advertising, when we know that Larry Page started Green, when we know that Alibaba and uh, Jack Ma, when we know that uh, uh, Mark Zuckerberg uh, and, and on and on, and all these guys who are, are we pioneers? They had an idea and they went through that idea and they built something extraordinary. Can we, in our field of advertising, doing something? which is new, which is different. As I said, I don't believe that I am a pioneer. I have to have uh, the humility of recognizing that I'm not. Uh, and I am the one who in that industry has the most believed in digital world. The point may be overstand. The future will tell <laughs> in that field. I don't know. But um, I, I have uh, heavily uh, invested uh, since uh, 2006 in order to transform. What led me to do that? I told you opening the eyes and observing. When I started to think about uh, what we call uh, this is the Human Digital Agency, uh, which was 2006, and uh, we started to think about this in 2005. 2005, we were in the Dead Sea. We were digging deep uh, below the level of the sea simply because the bubble burst, the top camera was finished, and no one was investing in digital. It was finished. And if you pronounce digital, you lose immediately 20% of your market uh, capitalization. Immediately, people didn't believe any word on digital. <coughs> And uh, I made the first deal, which has uh, been the Tishitas. Uh, uh, I paid it 
one billion three. Wow. I was looking people in the soup, people in the apple. The laptop in the knees, the cell phones, there was not yet smartphones. People were always uh, on, connected. The blur of uh, the time at work and the time uh, uh, at so called leisure, the fact that people were shopping online already. And I said this will have a huge consequence in our business. It will have an enormous consequence. And that consequence is that uh, our business will be hugely impacted by digital. And that has been the, the reason why I decided to, to do it. If we look now at the four trends, which will be with very little doubt, uh, shaping the future, you have big data. That's simple. And that is something which is uh, starting. It's just starting. No one has yet the solution. Uh, can we be a pioneer in big data? I don't know. We can create some new tools, we can create some new solutions, we can create some uh, new big things. But is it really the notion of being a pioneer? I don't believe so. But clearly big data is something which is changing the life of uh, our clients and should change our lives as advertising people because we have to think differently and we have to develop tools which will help us to uh, deal with the targeting in a much different way. We mentioned uh, the connected world. People are connected, they are always on. You can look at uh, what's happening mobile, smartphone, etc. Mobility today is at the core of everything. And when you look at uh, the way investment, advertising investment on mobile communication, you see a steep change. You see that, that the curve is going up very radically up uh, and with huge rate of growth and connected with social. And that has been the term for Facebook. It's when Facebook mobile. Uh, so it is clearly this uh, connection of uh, mobility and uh, social, uh, where people are using their mobile phone a little bit for calling someone and the most is for taking pictures, selfies, uh, writing emails, uh, SMS, etc. etc. Um, there is the address book, there is uh, a lot of things that are taking notes when they are in the airport, etc. Et I don't need to tell you that, you know that, and you are using yourself this. It is almost a computer. The third aspect, which will transform our life, our business, is e commerce. You have to know that. Uh, Projection one trillion euros in the world, and then you will continue. So you can imagine what this does mean, and you can understand why we have both sapiens. <laughs> and uh, the last thing which will shape the world is uh, uh, 2 million new consumers who will come from uh, Africa, India, and China. And this will shape the world. These are the four big uh, things which will happen. So, if you are a pioneer, I'm not. What, what will be the key things that you should think about 
when you look at these four big uh, uh, things which will shape the world, what are the areas you have to think about if you want to have an impact? The first one is that uh, there is a space, a new space, <coughs> which is the space of blurring. Everything is blurring. The life of the people is blurring. Between hours and non working hours, who cares? People call you at any time uh, because there is an issue. People do not think that it is Sunday or that it is uh, 11 p.m. because they are themselves on. Uh, you do not make a difference, and that's the reason why we see a lot of people when they are at the office doing uh, uh, their book stories and when they are uh, at home uh, <coughs> doing some homework some homework for the office. Time is blurred. <coughs> Time with the family is blurred, which is changing society. The other thing which is blurred is the role of companies. <coughs> One example, but there are many. One example is Amazon. What is Amazon today? Is it um, a bookseller? A DVD seller? or just a platform for e-commerce, okay? So we will say it's a platform for e-commerce. But they are selling it. And, and they are getting some revenue out of the car. This is not something for Amazon, this is something for Microsoft or for IBM. When you look at uh, Google, what is this company today? What are they doing? Are they building the car of the future? Are they creating the diagnosis of the future that you can have at home and cure your cancer before it is uh, Detected, or are they an IT company, <coughs> or are they simply a connecting tool? I don't know. They are going in so many directions, but you can take also some uh, classic companies, and you can see that uh, the blur is almost everywhere. Uh, the blur is something which is. Uh, changing completely thinking about company and this giving if you know because you can invent something at the intersection of a solution we were not thinking about yesterday because we had a, a, a mindset which was uh, uh, formulated uh, which was formed uh, with a format which was relatively simple. There are people who are doing hardware, there are people who are doing software, etc. There are retailers. Look at the retailers today. Are they retailers? Are they producers? Are they e commerce platforms? Then there is something which is extremely interesting in our world, which is about efficiency. We are building a society of deflation, at least in our business. Everyone has been growing in the world of expansion and the world of inflation should be lost if he is waking up today because everything that we are creating is cheaper. Media, much cheaper. A contact, much cheaper. Uh, and we see that the revenue of the agencies are declining unless if they can grow outside their normal <coughs> pond. The 
the client is looking at solutions which are much cheaper, much cheaper and uh, he is looking for uh, the uh, best ROI and there is a, <coughs> a mindset with procurement etc which is about deflation. And this is something which is changing the economy of the world and we should not be wrong about this because uh, we, we are creating uh, something which is uh, always uh, extremely tight and there is no room, no room for having interns, no room for hiring more people than we need, no room for having some uh, uh, extra people Keep just as trainees, and uh, uh, we don't know if we will use them or not. But I remember a time where I was hiring every year one people. I had no idea what I will do with that. Mm -hmm. I said, We will train them. Today, we can't do that. <coughs> not only I can't do that, but I have <coughs> to use uh, my workforce and success. The third aspect is something uh, that you have to think about, uh, which is uh, uh, key in the future, and which is in contradiction. I was speaking about the paradox. We have not finished with the paradox. Another paradox is that you have the big data, that you have access to the big data, and you have a huge privacy. And uh, at the same time, we want that our client want that we go and we communicate to individuals, and we have the responsibility of respecting the privacy of everyone. And this is something uh, that uh, has to lead us to think differently on how we can respect the privacy and at the same time finding the solution to target the right people. <coughs> We have found a way, but it is uh, uh, not yet perfect, and I'm not sure that it will be perfect one day, which is uh, to create avatars and to see a group of people who are resembling an avatar, and uh, then we are addressing the avatar, we are addressing the group of people, etc. The last thing is uh, speed. If uh, you, you think about something today and you want to make it happen, you have to make that. Uh, think uh, how much time it took uh, to Mark Zuckerberg to create Facebook. Uh, how much time it took uh, to create Twitter. It's no longer building a factory, uh, creating a new a building, etc. Uh, no, no, it's the brain. It's something which moves fast. And if you don't move fast, your idea is kept by somebody else, or took by somebody else, or invented by somebody else. The last thing I would like to today, if you are a company which already exists, <laughs> All these elements, if you don't look at them and you don't take the right decision pretty quickly, you are almost dead. Think about some companies which, if I'm giving names, maybe this will remind you something. Polaroid, Kodak, Newsweek, DFT Deutschland. Here, <laughs> what was Universal Music and even HP, who is now rebuilding the company. So, being a pioneer is also being capable of taking your old company to the new level <coughs> and not uh, forgetting that the world is changing around yourselves. What have we done? We are publicists, and maybe we have time for a few questions. Yeah. Uh, 
to take into account those exchanges and to make sure that we can deal with them, we have thought that uh, we, we have uh, to change our model. And because of uh, my engineer background, I thought about a formula where we have uh, IQ plus EQ plus TQ factor by BQ. IQ, everyone can understand, it's a intellectual quotient. It's about strategy, how you think about strategy. You think about the product, you position the product, you position the brand, you decide uh, intellectually uh, what should be the game for the client to win. So very simple. Uh, if you want to connect with uh, these uh, guys who are called uh, human beings, uh, you these uh, analog people, you have to find the way, and the way is clearly with the emotion. You will never build something on your ration. You can say a lot of time is cheaper, that's fine, they will benefit from the promotion, but they will not build the relationship. The relationship is built out of emotion. And you have to create that emotional link. TQ, simple, technology caution. We have to master technology. And all this, you have to do it bloody quick. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the is <laughs> because it's time of speed. And if you expect from me that I will give you the recipe of being a pioneer, as I said, I'm not a pioneer. I cannot give you the, how to become a pioneer. The only thing is if you believe in something, if you truly believe that you have an idea, if you truly believe that you can do something different, <coughs> just do it, as Nike said it. You fail. So what? Your wife, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, you say, ah, <laughs> okay, for a while. After you will bounce back and they think we work and uh, you will bring new ideas and new initiatives and uh, everything will be fine. But uh, the only thing that you should not accept is the dull life. <laughs> if there is something you should never accept, is to have a life of a bureaucrat. If you like to be a bureaucrat, you work in an insurance company or you become a, a civil servant, a functionaire. But if you want to be in the world of uh, emotion, of uh, intellectual power, where uh, there is the intersection of uh, uh, technology, marketing, communication. Uh, and the power of the creativity. You can't accept that and you can't accept the dull life. I think it was not a dull hour. So that in ten seconds we will get ten second answers. So we will have fifteen, 15 questions. 15. So go ahead, please. So in relation to the digital and the digital <coughs> Sorry, you said that position. Do you see what you said? You talked about the blur and the space. Uh, so I was interested in 
interested in hearing from you about the business model innovation opportunities that you see in the advertising space. This is something which is uh, keeping me really awake. Uh, if I'm serious about this, uh, there is uh, so many uh, difficulties that our industry is facing. It's not easy today for everyone, our competitors as well as ourselves. So look at in the fact you had many middle-sized agencies which were independent. Where are they today? Uh, either they uh, are capable of uh, uh, growing and they are bold, or they fail and they disappear. I think that we need to help our client in the digital transformation and we have to move back in the food chain. And uh, today we are at uh, we are keeping away. I don't know if there is many people from the advertising agencies in the room, but we are giving away a lot of what people are selling at a very high price. We are always giving away uh, our intellectual uh, offer capabilities. Uh, when we do planning and strategy, we are selling this by the hour, which is stupid. Uh, the creative uh, work is uh, uh, sold also on our fees, and um, we are just uh, limited in the field of communication. Where, in fact, what's happening today is that uh, our clients are facing uh, a, a lot of challenges for their digital transformation, and we have to learn how we can help them facing that digital transformation. And they believe that we are the best place to do that. It is complex, it is difficult. Uh, and um, part of the reason why I was interested in Sapien is because they have three arms. One, which is not the most interesting yet, one, uh, which is government services. One, which is what they call global market, which is in fact consulting and technology. And this is fantastic because it is helping the client to transform themselves. And the other one is Sapien Nitro, which is like a result feature of digital digital API. So we, with this uh, second arm, which is the global market, which is consulting and uh, technology, we can help them transform themselves. And we can take maximum advantage of what uh, uh, they can uh, create and we can be part of this uh, co-creation. So I, I, when you look at our business, sorry to be a little bit long, but it's uh, important, you see that uh, Accenture is coming in our field. Mm -hmm. You see that McKinsey is coming in our field. BCG is coming in our field. Why should we s stay still and not go in their field? And this is what I have tried to do by acquiring Sapien, is to say, okay, I'm, I'm not letting them come in here. And uh, I, they have to defend their business as they have to defend mine. <coughs> and as we are bringing we, the creative agencies, something which is unique, which is this bond, which is this emotional bond, this is something which we can leverage to a degree that. Michael? Maurice, how do you see the agency and your agency, but also your competitors, collaborating to innovate with some of the technology companies that you mentioned earlier? We, uh, we do it already. Uh, we signed the very first agreement with uh, Google in 2008. And in 2008, we agreed that uh, we will help Google understanding the consumers, understanding the client, and they will help us understanding the technology and the world of internet. We still have 
and 15 people at Google in our offices in Boston. They have developed uh, what we call AOD, which is audience on demand, which is our tool uh, for programmatic, which we launched in 2008. And we are collaborating with uh, Facebook, and we have been uh, instrumental on the video for Facebook. We are collaborating with Twitter, and we are helping them, and they are helping us. So we, we I don't believe, that, that is a very important question, I don't believe in tomorrow's world that one company, whatever it is, in whatever field, can do the whole thing by itself. In the good old days, you had uh, uh, the car manufacturer were doing the same. They, they were transforming uh, the, the steam, they were uh, uh, building the engine, they were doing the brakes, they were doing almost every single thing. Uh, the seats were developed by the manufacturers. Today, they develop a few pieces which are making the difference, and all the rest is assembled. You have a Bosch, a Valeo, who are developing four guns. It's no longer Renault, Mercedes, or BMW who are developing these four guns. And um, they are collaborating, and they try to have the best partners, which is, by the way, one of the chances they have. They have Barkers as one of their best partners. One day I said to one of my clients, you can put us in your balance sheet because you have the best team working for you. And you should not treat us by fees, but treat us as an asset. And I believe that uh, collaboration is indispensable. Even General Electric cannot do everything itself. So why should we be able to do that? So we have to collaborate with them. We have to collaborate with the media. We have to collaborate with the startups. And one of the things that I'm very keen on is uh, to invest in the startups. We have two tools at QVC. One is uh, something which is held by uh, uh, Richard Chakowala, who is our chief strategist, and it is called QVC Ventures. And we give seed money and we help and advise and support. Um, Today we have roughly uh, 45 uh, uh, companies that we are supporting, and we have the That is a more successful lesson. I'm always thinking that uh, the most successful thing that uh, will happen is yet to happen. I have uh, still. Uh, 20 something months ago before my retirement. And uh, I think that um, there is still two or three things that I would like to do which would be more successful than what I have ever done. Sounds good. <laughs> but it's some yes. <laughs> uh, but they are back, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> After that, the closing question. You know, 
I mean, we are we are very happy of what we've built here with the Berlin School. I wonder how you go about leadership education in two places and how you finance it. Do you have a budget for it? Where does the budget come from? She's a fundraising question. <laughs> She's a fundraising question. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Not fundraising, we want to have yeah, more yeah. participants from two Okay, I will. Uh, we have a program at the BCs. We have many programs. And this is something that we are revisiting today because we have far too many programs. Sachi has his own, the open has his own, two BCs is on, etc. etc. Everyone wants a new election. So they are. Quoting me the whole game. Mm -hmm. I said, yes, you know, So we want each one our own uh, different program. Now, some areas <coughs> it's very important to have the different, the different program because uh, it is a pressure. But there are a lot of areas where we, we don't need. At the group level, we have one program which is called the Executive Development Program, ETP, which is international which is uh, uh, four times a year, one in Europe, which is INSEAD, uh, one in the US, with Walton, And uh, what we are doing is something which is a uh, balanced project during uh, four days. Uh, people are working together, receiving lectures from clients, from professors, and uh, from uh, uh, executive from the group. Little. This part is uh, less than 10% that it is uh, just a kind of internship. And the last day, they have to present the result of their work. They have to learn to work in uh, teams, uh, and uh, they are rewarded. Uh, so it's uh, a group uh, of 40 to 50 people. We are having uh, uh, one on top of what we do in pure Mandarin in Shanghai, and it is, I believe, next week. Uh, otherwise, they are all in English. Um, the result, uh, it's, uh, there are many aspects of the result. The first one, they, they have built a community of uh, alumni, and it's very good. The second is that uh, there is a continuous improvement program with a very single program. Uh, uh, we, we are, uh, it, it is a step where people are prepared for new responsibilities. So it's something also which is viewed as being uh, very positive. A creative executive part of that? Or is it more? They are, but little. They are, they, but they don't feel good. <laughs> How do you feel? Good? good. Hey, raise your hand if you feel good. It's a there there is a question from the lady. We have been doing uh, for years something with clients that currently we are doing a program with Nestle where we are hiring together uh, students, beginners, and they have to spend 
at least six months of services, six months of next day, and then we decide who will be hiring. <laughs> <laughs> and they decide where they have to go. We have done that program. The first time I did it was in the 70s. I did it with uh, uh, Renault, and uh, it was terrible because uh, Renault wanted always all the promotion. And they were the kind. So I was training the people for no. But at the end of the day, I saw that what this was good and it has had to raise the bar of our creative product. Mm. So you are right, we should include the client. And what we do is uh, clearly insufficient. But we have that program with also loyal. <coughs> it's more difficult with American clients. <laughs> no, it's, uh, no, no, it's uh, simply because of their practice and their rules. Uh, there is less flexibility than with European clients. Uh, European oh, it's also difficult with the German clients. <laughs> <laughs> Morris, hey, thank you so much. Keep on pioneering, even if you don't think you're pioneering. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Come on, somebody else is sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> 
Everybody, please look at me. Okay, I take two or three more, right? All right. The man has to go. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. 